You think you know the story behind the end? You don't. Fear, such a perplexing emotion, can overwhelm even the bravest of creatures, compel them to do among the most peculiar things. The heart stopping, leg trampling, petrifying, revolting feeling of fear. Dread, fright, terror, call it what you want, it still lingers on even the most jolly of people, making its mark on every organism as it has been doing so for eternity. Inflicting fear, however, that is another matter. I have had my own encounter with it. Every mountain I set ablaze, every village I terrorize, those tormenting memories still clings tightly onto me, as it remains so to this very day. Parents clenching onto their children, their faces distorted with horror at the sight of my arrival. And my name is said to represent each passing year. A wise creature I am. I've witnessed the evolution of China, experienced Tian Shi Huang's raid, and seen firsthand the betrayal that has passed along generation after generation. This is my story. No one knows how I came into this world. To be honest, neither do I. My origins have baffled the citizens of China for centuries, puzzled even the most wisest of folks. Confucius himself couldn't wrap his head around the whole idea. Picture this. The very moment you open your eyes, all you can see is darkness. Like a void, keeping you bound to the surface, draining every sap of energy from your bones. Of course, it's not everyone starts off like this. Pinku is what they called me at first. I was just like you, a mere human, except blessed with the gift of immortality. I sat there alone, searching my mind for any hint of who I was. Flashes of memories, like pieces of a puzzle, started appearing in front of me. The only thing that seemed clear to me, the only thing that kept me going, was the primitive urge of fear. Years, decades, and centuries passed before dar this darkness started subsiding. Luscious valleys filled with streaming lakes surfaced from the dark mist. More and more of what is known as China rises from the clouds, along with you guys, humans. Dynasty after dynasty, I was of great use to the Chinese, helping them transport gears or aiding the wounded in battle. I was like a savior to them. I was like God to them. All was well until the reign of Tin Shi Huang. At this time, he was my most trusted friend. I was like an advisor to him, that voice that told him what was right and what was wrong. I was the one who organized the battles that would unite China. The one that would, the day of the war, the war that would unite China, and the war that changed the course of China's history. The battle would end millions of lives, but that would save billions more. I was to be the leader of this squad. Thousands of armies, equipped with glistening armor, was at my command and would attack and kill anyone who stood in my way, just with the lift of my finger. Gusts of wind blew past me, landing a soft kiss on my cheek as I rode by. The ferocious trotting of horses and men, unified like a harmony, ringed in my ears. Moments, years passed before the battle finally ended. Tisha Huang and I had won. We had won. I stood there in a victory, glancing at the new China that I created, the one that I, I made. Soldiers below started shouting, laughing, fireworks started banging. Scrumptious food and, and delicacies were put before them. As they chomped down on them, devoured each and every plate. I was up there, up there on the top of the building, admiring the view, if you will. Tia Shi Huang stood there next to me, patting me on the shoulder, as if rewarding me of the things I had done. If it were not for my quick instincts, I would never spot out of the corner of my eye something glistening, something exquisite, exit from Tia Shi Huang's handmade robe. No time in between, a cold, sharp-edged object entered through my chest. I stood there in shock 
I leaned forward as an attempt to ease the pain. Every part of my body throbbed, aching in agony. The object I identified as a blade. The blade twisted and turned inside of me, entering ever so close to my spleen. I stood there motionless, stunned by the event that occurred. There he stood, Ti Shi Huang, with the blade in his grasp, his hands submerged in blood. At that very moment, my world imploded on me, collapsing and shattering. All I could hear was a voracious cracking of fireworks echoing in my ears. The laughter of men and the scarlet red color of blood, my blood, spread through my eyes, covering all my vision. That was the last thing I saw or heard before that same darkness, that same fear, overwhelmed me once again. Years passed by. I saw Ti Shi Huang take the throne, gather up all the glory. Even to people today call him the father of China, the conqueror of China. Any of those names. He stood there victorious, whilst I lay deteriorating, forgotten, hatred and revenge clouding me, as though transforming me. Quite literally, really. My skin turned to scales. My fingers morphed into claws. That very moment, Nian was born. The hatred grew inside me. Finally, I was set free from my cage of emptiness, able to exact my sworn revenge on Qin Shi Huang and unleash my fear to all those who wronged me. That's how I remain to this very day, vengeful. So the next time you sit around your family, enjoy the wonders that your life has brought you, passing money and exchanging greetings. Think of me and all the pain I endured, all the sacrifices I made, only to be betrayed by the one whom I called my friend.